Welcome back to AP U.S. History. This is part two of chapter 20. Uh, we've been talking about the populist movement, the populist party. Uh, certainly it had a lot of support in the West. Uh, farmers were looking for a political solution to their problems against the Eastern establishment. <coughs> uh, in the election of 1892, uh, Grover Cleveland will run again for president. Uh, and he will win the nomination in his party, and uh, he will be successful running against uh, uh, President Harrison. Now, Harrison had been elected in 1888. Now, uh, Cleveland was a Democrat. He um, didn't get to serve two consecutive terms. They were separated. Uh, one of the big issues uh, in the election of 1892 uh, was a protective tariff. Um, now that also had been an issue in 1888. Uh, in the meantime, the Populist Party are going to nominate General James B. Weaver and he will run on the Omaha platform. Um, the Omaha platform consisted of uh, the agenda, the, the uh, things that the Populist Party party was pursuing. They still wanted the sub-treasury idea uh, where they could borrow money against uh, crops being stored in silos. Uh, they, they wanted the, to abolish the National Bank. Uh, they wanted senators to be elected directly by the people. Uh, and this will happen later uh, in the 20th century. So some of their agenda will be fulfilled. Most of it wasn't. Ownership of the railroads, telephones, telegraph companies never happened. Uh, they wanted the government to operate a postal savings bank uh, to give, provide low interest loans to farmers. Um, they wanted un some restrictions on immigration. They wanted an eight-hour workday for government employees. They thought that this might bring more people into the party. Uh, they were never big fans of the Pinkerton Detective Agency because they always seemed to be on the side of big business. Uh, they wanted the Australian secret ballot, that is, that you voted and people didn't know how you voted. And they certainly wanted silver to be part of the money system. Uh, they wanted more silver coins. Um, and most people, most of the people in the power, uh, particularly Cleveland and Harrison, were uh, supporters of uh, the gold standard, that is, paper dollars being backed by gold rather than silver. Uh, they were also uh, in favor of limiting the president and vice president to one four-year term. Uh, this picture shows uh, a cartoon suggesting that the government be taken over or taken over some of the businesses, railroads and telegraph and so forth. Uh, the results of the election, Cleveland wins the election. Uh, it's significant to note that the Populist Party received a million votes and 22 electoral votes, uh, but they don't put anybody into the White House. Um, white farmers in the South refuse to support the Populist Party, and this is going to hurt them. This shows the breakdown of the election, and you can see that Cleveland, uh, who is a Democrat, uh, is going to carry the day. Uh, if you see the word bimetallism, it really is operating on the silver and gold standard. Uh, of course, this cartoon seems to indicate that that wouldn't work very well. Uh, the Panic of 1893. This lasted uh, uh, for most of uh, Cleveland's uh, term in office. Uh, in fact, it will extend beyond his uh, his term of office. It was one of the worst depressions that ever hurt, hit America. Uh, created a lot of hardships on businesses and farmers. Uh, the stock market collapsed. 20% uh, of the people were unemployed. Um, there was a reduction of the money supply, which uh, increased problems uh, because there was already an agric agricultural depression at the time. Um, in terms of when it started, it started 10 days after Cleveland took office. Uh, uh, 16,000 business will disappear. Farmers will have their farms foreclosed. Uh, 
and it because of this the stock market is going to take a, a crash um, 500 banks are going to go away and depositors won't get their money back uh, in 1895 uh, the unemployment rate was 3 million people uh, some Americans called out for relief from the government uh, but because of a laissez-faire attitude the federal government did nothing to alleviate the poor this picture this cartoon shows the, the plight of the labor the debts interest rates on their debt uh, no one really sympathetic uh, uh, Cleveland and uh, Congress are considered traitors to the workers. This was written uh, by a farmer at the end of the 19th century. It kind of sums up how he felt about the economy. When the banker says he's broke and the merchant's up in smoke, they forget that it's the farmer who feeds them all. It would put them to the test if the farmer took a rest. Then they know that the farmer feeds them all. That little poem uh, indicating that farmers were very important uh, to the economy and feeding people. Uh, in terms of Cleveland's second uh, term in office, he's a Democrat, uh, the gold reserves fell uh, below 100 million or below 100 million to support 350 million uh, dollars in paper money. Um, uh, the, the problem with the paper money, it wasn't accepted by people overseas, so if you were trading with them, they wanted to be paid off in gold. Um, Cleveland, who is supportive of the gold standard, uh, repeals the Silver Service Purchase Act, uh, which would have uh, added more coinage, gold or silver coins, to the economy. William Jennings Bryan uh, objects. Uh, there was the Morgan Bond a transaction uh, because the gold reserves fell to about 41 million uh, the economy was a little shaky overseas trade was crippled because they weren't going to take uh, paper money uh, JP Morgan and some other bankers step up and lend the government 65 million dollars in gold uh, they didn't do this out of the goodness of the heart they got a seven million dollar commission but it stabilized the economy and things move on. Now Cox's Army, 1894, these are industrial workers who march on con Congress for relief. Uh, they want Congress to spend more money on public works so that it will put some people to work. Uh, the Will uh, Wilson-Gorman bill is passed in 1894, again uh, raising tariffs. Um, which makes it more expensive to buy things overseas and then they retaliate and raise tariffs so it's harder to sell American goods overseas. Uh, so Cox's army, uh, some called hayseed uh, socialist people trying to get something from the government. Uh, this cartoon uh, really is uh, the results of the election returns um, and as you can see the populist victories um, Colorado and Dakota and so places um, because uh, things are in bad shape uh, the populist vote increased by 40% in 1894 uh, because of this t downward spiral uh, Democratic Party lost most in the West uh, but the Republicans will control the House and so things are still in firmly controlled by the Republicans. Now the election of 1896 comes along. Uh, this is uh, really the demise of the Populist Party because they're going to throw their support to William Jennings Bryan. They're going to elect him. These pens show whether you were a silver standard kind of a person or a gold standard or bimetallic. Uh, William uh, McKinley uh, was nominated by the Republican Party and he will win. Uh, Marcus Hannon was his campaign manager and he ran a masterful campaign uh, against William Jennings Bryan. Uh, his philosophy, as was McKinley, uh, was that uh, the function of government was to ha help businesses. 
believed in a trickle-down economy, and that is if the businesses were doing well, the labor community would also be working and doing better. Firmly believed in the gold standard and protective tariffs, as most Republicans did, protecting American uh, industry. Uh, Mark Hanna, the Pitchfork uh, campaign, he tried to c characterize uh, McKinley as one of the down-home boys, uh, a, a man of the people. Uh, this shows uh, the Republican Party trying to crucify labor on the cross of gold, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. This shows a picture of William, uh, William McKinley. Uh, this is Mark Hanna uh, conducting his campaign. And of course, this is supposed to be uh, Hanna the... the that uh, man Clay was an ass. It's better to be president than to be right. Well, uh, he had to understand this cartoon in the context that it was given. Um, but essentially uh, saying that uh, even though you might be a man of the people, uh, you might still be deceiving them. Uh, he sort of straddled the gold and silver standard thing. He didn't talk about that too much because he didn't really want to lose votes. So that's what uh, politicians like to do. They like to straddle issues and, and keep you in the dark. Uh, he was seen as a seasoned politician where the young newcomer, William Jennings Bryan, was seen as a child. Uh, he had been uh, McKinley had been a, a veteran of the Civil War. Uh, he was a man that you could trust. Uh, the Prohibition Party is going to run a candidate, uh, Levering, and uh, the 18th Amendment later in the 20th century uh, will outlaw the sale and manufacture of uh, alcoholic beverages. So into which box will the voters place uh, his ballot? Uh, the People's Party, the Democratic Party, or the Republican Party? Uh, essentially, the Re People's Party cho chooses William Jennings Bryan, and they come to an end. This was the uh, election results, and you can see that McKinley wins uh, in the areas, uh, uh, industrial area of the United States and the West, uh, where McKinley carries uh, the farm states and the South. Uh, William Jennings Bryan. Uh, uh, delivers his famous cross of speech, uh, uh, gold speech, which says that we will answer their demand for a gold standard by saying to them, because he doesn't like a gold standard, we shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns or the gold standard. We shall not crucify mankind or the farmers or workers on the cross of gold. So he hates the gold standard. He wants a silver standard. And so he pushed for unlimited coinage of silver so there'd be more money available for loans. Nominated by the Populist Party, but unfortunately, uh, McKinley's going to win the elections. Uh, quite, quite an orator, getting people kind of worked up. Uh, the Prairie Avenger, the Mountain Lion, Brian, Brian, Brian. The uh, gigantic troubadour speaking like a siege gun, smashing cement rocks with his boulders from the west. Well, uh, he certainly had uh, the ear of the people. He delivers a uh, speech uh, dealing with the gold standard, uh, which is something you probably will have to know about him. Uh, he conducted a whistle stop campaign uh, by rail going all over the country. Uh, telling people what he believed and what a vision for America. Uh, the Democratic Party taken over by agrarian left, uh, so this is this comes from the Republicans. Uh, they wanted, but the platform for the Democrats was a tariff reduction, income tax, stricter control of the trust, and big business, and free silver. And those were the issues, but unfortunately, uh, William Jennings Bryan will uh, 